So to start with, I'm going to use these white decor frames from Dollar Tree. For now, I'm just going to show doing one of the three door cases. But obviously, if you want a top and a bottom, then you just double everything. So I started with three of the white frames and I simply removed the ink with a box cutter. Once the ink is all off, I set it to the side and I grab a silver 5x7 frame from Dollar Tree. I take it apart. I remove the tabs and all that good jazz. And I take it down to the four pieces. Now, these are the easiest picture frames to disassemble, by the way. But now you want to glue the longest uh, picture frame pieces together. So I snip off a little piece of a dowel to kind of bridge the two pieces together in the center. And I use some small craft sticks or popsicle sticks to reassure the attachment. So I glue the craft sticks all the way across the bottom of both frames. I just want to let you know now would be a great time to paint these if you wanted. I should have and I didn't. Um, next we're going to take the three frames and get those in place. And what is really really awesome about this creation is you don't really have to measure anything here because it'll all line up automatically. For the ends I set each frame up against the bottom of the long frame pieces and because of the angle they're going to be positioned at a slant like I said automatically so you just want to follow the angle of the frame and once they're lined up along the angle then you just simply glue the bottom together now I'm going to take one of the 8x10 wooden stretch canvases from Dollar Tree and I just rip the fabric off. I take the staples out and all I'm going to use here is the 8 inch small piece to brace the top together. I see how my hinges will fit on this piece of wood with the middle frame. Now you want to place this directly behind where the back edge of the frame is. Don't bring the wood too close up or you won't be able to open and close your door. Once I have the wood centered where it'll fit across the top, touching both frames and be behind the middle frame, then I glue it into place. For now, I'm just gonna add a small drop of hot glue to temporarily uh, glue and connect the hinge in the very middle. For now, that's just a little brief thing that I did to make sure my plan for this creation would come together like I have in mind. You can do this step if you want, um, or you can, you know, bypass it. Most curio cabinets have clear shelves made out of glass, but to avoid having to cut the glass, I grabbed one of the long clear plastic trays from the wedding section of Dollar Tree, and I cut this with my hot knife, and I used the smallest, finest tip that I have for my hot knife. Now the fine tip, it does take a little bit longer to cut, but it's very, very easy to correct any mishaps and get back on track. Plus you won't create any of the big gashes or melted gaps along the way. So I just follow along with my um, knife here with along the factory lines. And it's more like a lip on the back of these trays. It's really easy to follow along with, with how the tray is made. So I go all the way across making a straight cut on both of the long sides of the tray and then I just set my unit right directly on top of the tray and get an idea of where I need to trim my sides or my slants. Um, to fit into the shape that my frames make and you want to be sure to trim off the edges um, on the sides of the tray kind of where they turn up so that this piece is completely flat now I know mine isn't perfect but the most important thing to remember is the tray needs to sit inside the ledges of the picture frames so it has maximum support and I also notched out a little piece on the sides um, where the tray begins to slant in the front that way the tray kind of scoots up and rests on the side frames or the ledges of them. And I also had to trim off the back a little bit more as well for it to fit in. To fill in the gaps, I take some leftover pieces from the tray and I cut to fit um, my little corners here. And it was just two little small triangles. As you can tell, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just so long as you're, you know, it's not like overlapping or has, you know, these huge gaps. It'll be fine so um, now I'm ready to glue all three pieces in place and I do that with my hot glue
And this is something else that you can completely skip. In fact, I, I recommend skipping it. But um, as I mentioned, I should have painted my bottom long frame piece earlier. And I didn't. So to conceal the raw wood from the craft sticks, I used a silver picture frame to do this. And I had to cut to fit the center frame piece. And I just glue them into place. And then I covered that with adhesive gems. Now outside of the hinges, there is only four screws in this entire cabinet. And that's counting the top and the bottom. So there's two in each section i have one screw in each side of the eight inch wood piece that's glued to the top of the side frames now the center frame will be screwed to the wood by the hinge screws so everything will be connected all i do here is just drill pilot holes in the wood followed with a medium sized screw the screw needs to be long enough to go through the wood and the frame and there is plenty of playroom in these frames just be sure that you go in front of the glass and once the screws are in, you can instantly feel how sturdy this becomes. Now I'm ready for my hinges. And I purchased a two-pack of hinges um, from Walmart. And these are too small just to use one in the center of the frame. And the bigger hinges won't fit. They hang over. So you need to use... Um, just the whole two pack on one door and i place the hinges towards the end of the frame then i just mark my holes with my pencil drill a hole and then i follow that with the screws that came with the pack next i decorate my frames and for this i use some of the flat back gems that i have from a variety pack and these are just the standard gems and you can find them at any craft store including walmart and I used a mixture of those and just created a design as well as some of the um, smaller flat back gems. The jot gems actually from Dollar Tree, the adhesive ones. So I just made my design like I said on the face of it. And I glued the loose gems with hot glue. Once my decorating was finished, I set my two units on top of a piece of foam board to get an idea of how this was all going to come together. These just about fit the foam board perfect by the way. So once they're on there, I open and close the bottom door to see how it's going to fit how the door is going to open and function and I quickly realized I need to create some space between the two units so the bottom door doesn't hit the top so I grab a piece of foam board and I make a two inch mark every so often across the foam board and then I cut that with my box blade I do this twice creating two um two inch long pieces Next, I lay one of the two inch foam board pieces between the top and the bottom. And then I draw a line where the edges of the frames line up. Here, you just need to make a cut through the top layer of foam without cutting all the way through because the foam will just, you know, fold over and stay connected. That is what you want to do makes the trim fit perfect between the cases i make a couple of more cuts and you can see how well it fits all the way across the front and in between the two units i set it to the side and i begin working on the inside for this i have three mirrors from dollar tree i take them out of the frames and then i place each one on the inside and i mark the foam board so i know um, the mirrors are on the inside between the white tall decor frames you don't want the mirrors to be on the outside of this case you want to make sure you keep the mirrors on the inside so next all i do is just simply glue the frames to the foam board I'm, the center one will have to overlap and be glued to the side mirrors and the foam board by the way so make sure you have the mirrors where you want them when you place them down because i couldn't move mine <laughs> It's stuck and it stuck great and it stuck fast. And um, I didn't really have a lot of time to set it. So be aware of that. So the mirrors don't cover fully. There is still a lot of white foam board showing um, on the top and the bottom. So I just cut to fit some adhesive bling wrap from Dollar Tree. At this point, most everything left to do is just decorate it because, I mean, you can tell that it's pretty much made now so really we're just kind of tying everything in together and decorating so to trim around the inside mirrors i use five rows of adhesive diamond wrap from dollar tree i cover the top and the bottom and above the uh, bottom case is a gap and you can see the white foam board here i also cover that area with more bling wrap i cover the sides and the very bottom not necessarily in that order <laughs> after the inside is decorated and the mirrors have set 
Before I glue the center trim, I take one of the two inch foam board pieces that I cut earlier and I see how well the door opens and closes. But because the foam sticks up a lot, it doesn't open as much as I like for it to. So I mark and I notch out a little place in the foam uh, strip for the hinges so they're no longer covered. And um, now at this point, I'm thinking, well, I probably need to go ahead and paint the, the raw wood because that may show. So in case some of the raw wood does show, I just took a little bit of the white acrylic paint and I covered that so it would all blend really nice. Next, it's time to glue the trim down. So I add the glue to the wood. For the sides, I take a small little wooden block and I glue it to the bottom of the foam board and to the top of the white frame so it doesn't move around. Now it's time to glue the first case on. So I place the first case over the mirrors and I make sure it's all lined up perfectly. And I keep it in place and hold it as I pick up on it and glue around the edges with permanent adhesive and hot glue. Now there's a little hangover of white foam board at the very bottom. I trim it flush um, so everything is really nice and even at the bottom. And then I flip my unit around and I work on the top. And I'm just going to kind of touch on everything here instead of really covering it because it's pretty much the same thing. I just do the same thing as before. I'll line up the inside with adhesive bling and the three mirrors from Dollar Tree. It's all the exact same. I measure and I mark uh, two inches from the top with my ruler and then I cut that trim. Now I take my two inch piece of trim and this will be for the top. I make the center cuts and I fold the foam so you know it makes that shape just like before. And once it's all in place, I glue it and I add the wooden blocks to the sides of the trim as well. Now this is what it looks like so far and with my hot glue gun I glue the top case to the trim I go around really nice and slow and I take my time here so it looks really neat now I take a wooden block and I snip off four pieces of wood from a small craft stick and I glue everything together and I paint that white I do this twice so I have one for each side Next, I place the little wood piece or wood wedge um, between the frames for added support. And I make sure to glue that really good into place. Now I flip my entire unit upside down. And you may want to tape the doors down here. You may want to tape that shut with like some masking tape. Um, because they're going to fly open, obviously, it's upside down. Anyway, I'll just trace out the top, and after it's traced, I cut it out with a box cutter. Now, for the lighting, I have an LED push light. Now, this one's not from Dollar Tree. I need to get some more, um, but the ones from Dollar Tree are perfect for this. So, I just trace out the light, and I cut out my circle, and I place the light through the hole, and it should fit really nice and snug. Add glue around the body of the light, not getting any near the lid or the backing of the battery so you can access the battery. So I ended up tracing and cutting out another piece of foam board just like before for the top um, and 
only glue the light to the first piece of foam and then you can attach the second piece of foam um, together kind of you know just sandwiching the two but you don't want to glue um, you don't want to add any glue around the light on the second piece of foam because this is just going to make it really nice and make the light fit flush it's going to conceal it and it's still going to be where you can change out your batteries now all that's left to do to the body of the cabinet is attach the top piece and i just go around the top with the hot glue and kind of like a lid you know i just put the top piece on that has the light in it and i finish up my decorating and i decided to make a quick trip to hobby lobby and get some more of the adhesive gems for my trim and i cover the two inch trim pieces with those adhesive gems from hobby lobby and i also added a few of the mosaic mirrors i didn't have many left but i had enough to go around the top piece or the top foam that encases the light and after the trim is decorated my hot glue is dry on the foam so I can add my other piece of foam to the top so I just glue those together making sure not to get any of the glue around the hole or my light so I can change the batteries when that time comes now you can make a place on the back so you can hang this on the wall and have a wall mounted curio cabinet or you can stand it up now if you want to stand it up you'll obviously have to make some legs for it and for the legs I glued together two of the full-size wooden blocks and I'll link more about the blocks in the description description box so I created four legs and I feed the bottom of those through a round napkin ring holder from Dollar Tree and these napkin ring holders are made of super hard plastic so it took some pushing to get them through but it adds a bigger platform to the bottom of the feet now for the two front legs I took a craft stick and I cut that into three pieces of wood and then I just glue those to the top of the block and this is to make it sit level because the back has um, that back frame to the bottom, added to the bottom. And I painted all of my little legs white. And then I used Mod Podge and silver glitter so that they would blend with the bling theme. And I made an extra leg while I was attaching them. So I just positioned the legs on the frames and then I would just substitute my extra leg in place of the one that I was currently gluing. And I repeated this for all of my legs and I let that glue sit for several hours and I used a permanent clear glue and hot glue for this then I took pictures of it and this is the final result this is a project that I think you'll really enjoy there isn't really anything involved that's hard it's very little measuring and that's actually just for the two inch pieces of trim and if you want to invest in a super strong construction adhesive you could actually just substitute the screws of course I recommend using the screws especially because there's only a couple in each unit other than that it's a lot of glue and so I really think that you can create this and I would certainly love to see it if you do i hope you enjoyed this diy and i'm making a special video that'll be out very soon i'm so so very grateful for each of you watching and for those who are subscribed i'll see you again real soon and until then many blessings and happy crafting my friend